Welcome to the Social Chase. My name is Chase, and I welcome my co-hosts, Jaden, my mom, Helen, yeah. and our special guest, award-winning autism activist, Marcus Boyd. Hello, Marcus, and welcome to the Social Chase Show. I'm so excited. We're so honored to have you on the show. Um, and I, I just, I saw you on uh, autism platform. I said, oh, we have to have on the Social Chase Show because you are so inspirational in so many ways. And so I'm so grateful for you being part of our show. Well, so, I'm grateful to be here on your amazing and y'all amazing platform. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to you sharing your journey of being an autism activist. I just, it's so important to have an individual on the spectrum, not only as parents, but you yourself being activists for others just like you. So it, it's a really important task or not a passion, I should say, not a task, an important passion that you're doing. I appreciate that. And I, I tend to thank a lot. So just like, that's okay. I, I'm a very thankful person. So I want to keep thanking you so much. <laughs> so Marcus, um, so you just started think, speaking to you about 13, 13 and a half years old, and you're at a, like a two, two year old grade level. Um, you had a challenging childhood. You lived in 16 foster homes, seven group homes, and unfortunately you experienced abuse as well. But who was the person that identified that you had autism? Um, it was my social worker, Dr. Carr, God rest her soul. Um, she realized something was different about me than the other kids that she had on her caseload, than the other than her four kids that she had at home. Um, she encouraged my grandmother to take me to a friend of hers that was Dr. King at Clifton Springs Mental Health Center in Decatur, Georgia. Mm -hmm. So when he told my grandma I had severe classic autism, mm -hmm. and you know, at that time, that was in April 12th, 1993. It was not like it was a bunch of groups, pamphlets, books. There was like, um, yeah, this is what autism is. And here's a support group that you can be a part of and it can help you. It, it wasn't like that in 1993. I don't know what it is now, but um, everything, then, everything now just slows down. Now. I mean, everyone's just helping out now, but back then, must have been must have been terrible back then. Yeah, you, you because you know my my grandma had 22, 24 kids. My mom had twenty two of us, and and it's like um, when you are dealing with that diagnosis, I come from pray it out, mm. or that's where I come from. Pray it out, you know, it's a demon, or you know, he's acting bad. He needs prayer, you know, he needs. You know, church. <laughs> so hold on one second. Okay, so Marcus, it, so that's that's great. I mean, it's so important that your social worker cared enough about you to identify that there was a need and to get you to help. And I, we had a, quite a few people in Chase's life that directed us in the right way, and I call him his, I call him Chase's angels. So I would say your social worker was your angel because she saw something in you that everybody didn't take the time to see in you and she, she helped you out. So that's really wonderful. So Marcus, can you tell us about how you overcome your obstacles and became an autism activist? Sure, I became an autism activist almost five years ago. Um, and as far as the obstacles of, you know, being nonverbal, um, you know, I didn't start speaking until I was 13, 13 and a half at a two-year-old's level. And I didn't start speaking like this until I was almost 18. Wow. Um, I had a nice. therapist. Her name was Anna Gibbs. Um, my, my peer specialist, her daughter, her name was Angel. Um, you know, as far as, you know, when I was using the bathroom on myself or whatever, I didn't stop that until I was like 18, 19. Um, I didn't get off medication until I was like 22, 23 years old from Ritalin, Paxil, Depakote, Cinequin. Oh, wow. um, you're talking about 500 to 1,000 milligrams twice, two, two to three times a day. Wow. Um, so, um, again, I'm next year I'll be 40. So, I mean, just to give you a time lapse. You look <laughs> younger. <laughs> you look younger than 40. <laughs> 
<laughs> but to give you a time lapse. But um, I, I, I think the autism activist part, it chose me. I didn't choose it because right. I've been in the music industry for so long and I was trying to put a rug over my diagnosis because I wanted to be normal, not knowing that I was already normal as to who I was and what I was. Um, so basically, long story short, I was really wanting to go to Walmart, a female friend of mine, I asked her to pick me up. And if anybody know about Atlanta, I-285 and stuff like that, it's a big old circle and it was raining real hard. And she said, her son has autism. And if I don't go to her church and tell my testimony of me having God allow me to speak, she would drop me off in the middle of the highway. Amen. And again, I ain't know how to get Amen. home. I ain't know how to get home. So it was either go to her church mm -hmm. or uh, walk on 285. So um, I kind of decided to go to her church. <laughs> so that was almost five years ago. So I told the congregation my story and everybody embraced me. It was a beautiful situation. Then I realized that it was not my position to have a voice and don't use it. Right. I have to use the voice that God gave me. Hence, an autism activist. That's good. I like George. to hear that. I See, like that's a good that. Lord working right there. Right, bro. That's Just because that you have like autism, you're not trying to have that like your um, like your weakness. That's your um, that's your power up right there. So where if you got like that autism inside you, right, you don't be having them having yourself like silent and stuff. So I like to hear. I like I like what you just said right there. Like. You're saying like, oh, just because I have like autism that you just like feel uh, normal. No, you're normal inside. You're normal inside. That's just like your, that's not like your weakness or something. That's not like your weakness. So you just take that on, um, just go by, you just bypass that and you just go by your, uh, by your day, man. That's it. I mean, I got it, but I don't have that as my like um weakness and stuff. You feel me? So we're, uh, yeah. I like that, Jaden. That's really good because it's it's part of you, and it's, yeah, it's part of me. It's weakness. It's part of me. It's mm. not my weakness. So where if I say like, oh, if I can't do it because I have autism, no, I could do it, right. but yeah, you might have to do I it differently. Do it. You might have to do it a little bit yeah. differently, approach it differently. You, you can do it a little bit differently. It, it might it. be it might be um challenging. It might be right. challenging, but you could go you could go by that either way. Right. Either way, man. Mm. Powerful. So, um, who and what services helped you the most on your journey? Like, did you get certain service that really helped you the most in terms of speaking, or a certain person that helped you um, with your language? And were you always social, just not nonverbal? Were you all? Were you always um, I wasn't always social, no, ma'am. And um, back in my day, again, I gotta just keep saying this: they didn't really have ABA or BACA yeah. or you know, it wasn't it wasn't categorized like that in those early days. It was just therapy. You understand what I'm saying? You had a medication doctor and you had a therapist. It came okay. with a package deal, especially yeah. if you were assigned to the state. You had a you had a social yeah. worker. You had a behavior aid, at which they call a peer specialist now. Bob Ordner was my behavior aid. Anna Gibbs was my speech therapist. Um, her daughter was my peer speech therapist. Oh, wow. Um, I, I mean, everything was separated back then. Now you got people doing five or six jobs for one child. I mean, they used to give clothing vouchers. I, I mean, I mean, it was a different generation when I was coming up. You understand right. what I'm saying? Right. So for me, my therapist became family. So she was breaking. She, I mean, she's retired now, so I'm not going to get her fired. But like, but I mean, I'm just being real. But she was breaking HIPAA laws, confidentiality laws. You understand what I'm saying? Because I was going to her house. I was meeting her mom. I was having dinner with her kids. I mean, therapists she ain't knew what to do. Me. She knew what to do for you. Right. Therapists ain't supposed to do that. I mean, you can lose your job. You understand right. what I'm saying? They're too close yeah. to the client. Some things but are more important. Some she things was, you were more important. I mean, like her mom lived in another state. She packed me up every summer and and took me to her mom's ah. house. You understand what I'm saying? Like That's my grandma, true. they had the sticky notes. We went through hooked on phonics, muzzy. Like, yeah, you I'm old school because I said muzzy. But um <laughs> like like reading rainbow, the big white Bible with the letter with the yellow letters in it. Right. I mean 
Furious George. I mean, like <laughs> Big Red Dog. I mean, <laughs> that's great though. <laughs> that's good. So that's but that was not great because we went through this every day. If uh, I stuttered, if I stuttered, if I used the bathroom on myself, if I slobbed, they didn't care. They didn't care. They would this is this is for hours. I come from my speech therapist and I still had to learn how to sound words, how to, I mean, it was like a color purple moment. I'm I it really look at you now. Look at you now, Marcus. Look at you. Right? I mean, my, my, my grandma knew what she was doing. Right. Yeah. Look at you. Okay, Chase. You have a question? Yes. You are also a music producer, which is inspiring for so many young people. Can you share how you were able to collaborate with such great art, art, artists such as Mob Deep, Dwell, and many more? And did you have any challenges with your autism? Yeah, um, actually, it was a PR friend of mine that connected me. I mean, if we're gonna if we're gonna talk about those amazing artists, you know, Sleepy Brown, Organized Noise gave me my first laptop and Fruity Loops One demo version. Again, I'm old, so when I say Fruity Loops One now, they probably on Fruity Loops 12, 13. Okay, 14 you gotta stop saying you're old because I'm older than you. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm and saying I'm, I'm, okay, I'm, I'm gonna stop saying, saying it. <laughs> I'm gonna stop saying it, bro. I, I come from a different place. I come from a different place. Different. different. <laughs> he gave me an Acer laptop, and you know, I was learning. I was in concert band already, and I was in marching band, so I was learning how to fuse live instrumentation with digital compression sounds, meaning mm. your BPMs, your KBs, and everything else. Um, you know, learning how to bridge melodies and harmonies and stuff of that nature. I've been making beats since I was 15. My first major placement was April 12, 1998, when I helped make the beat for Cool Breeze, watch out for the hook. I mean, nice. I mean, you know, and I was 15 and with the autism, it was like, I'm still couldn't really speak like that. And I'm just, I'm trying to write stuff down and mm -hmm. it's not spelled right and stuff of that nature. But luckily those guys was almost like at my level, education wise. I mean, they was right. like me, right. I mean, they couldn't spell right either. I mean, so, <laughs> I mean, it was almost like being in the community of, of amongst myself. I thought everybody in their room had autism. The grown <laughs> people. <laughs> I mean, hey, my, that's, that, that's another story. That's another, that's just another not story. diagnosed, that's all. <laughs> that's, another, that's another story. That's, yeah. that's really another story. Like but, wait, Marcus, what did you inspire you to make music? Um... You know, I, it, it, okay, this really may sound crazy, but it's the truth. I hear melodies and sounds like people hear conversations. Mm -hmm. So it can be a guitar, a piano, an organ, an uh, electrical guitar. Uh, it can be a trumpet, a flute, a clarinet. It can be anything. I, I hear it in my head, like very, very clearly. So the only thing I do is take musically in, and put it in a musical format of what I hear, put vocal samples, put, you know, audio samples on there, which you, which every producer have to get those legally cleared. But again, that's a whole nother show. But <laughs> one, uh, one more question. Uh, what point is, can you give to someone that would love to be in the music industry? Um, make sure your name, your logo, and every beat is copyrighted. Do not put it on social media. Do not. Mm. Do not put it on YouTube because YouTube is a website. So you need to put it on your own website. Get a penny click account, which means every time you get a penny and every time, I mean, every time somebody click on your account, you get a penny. So there's 10 million people on the internet. Right. So if 10 million people okay. hit, your, hit your website, that's $10 million off a penny. You understand what I'm saying? So you need to make sure that stuff is trademarked. You need to make sure you own the rights to every beat, own the rights to every song. Right. Make sure your mixing and mastering is correct. Don't just brush it and put it on social media because six of your homeboys or 13 people in your family told you it was a hit. Unfortunately, mm. it may be a hit. Or fortunately, mm. it may be a hit. But if you put it on social media, somebody can take your hit, take your name off of it and create and get your money. Right. That's so just make sure the business side is correct. 
Don't rush just because you got a talent and you the next twister. Don't don't rush. Make sure your business is right first before you put it out. Mm. That, that's that's even true for Chase with the books. Uh, we, I because he draws a lot and he's on the um, a certain website and he shares his artwork. I'm like, put the copyright on your artwork. You're, you don't want anybody stealing your characters. Put your, so we went and we copywritten his characters. But you know, some people uh, took his characters, created something different, and put it on YouTube. I had to report them because I said, please take it down. They didn't take it down. So I had to report them for them to take it down because it's a copywritten character that he's using his characters. And so you just, and so, you know, that was excellent advice, um, Jaden. So for Jaden, for, for music. So thank you so much. So Jaden really wants to be in music? Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been making, I've been making like some things on my phone and I have this uh, music program on the computer, but I haven't, been on that one, but I've been on the one on my phone. I've been making bangers after this. But, yeah. Well, listen, if you need any advice, right, any advice, I'm here any time of day oh, because man. nobody was there for me. So I don't want people to make the same mistakes that I made because I was rushing to get on. I was rushing to go on tour. I was rushing to have somebody hear my beats. So, you know, it's a dirty game out there. You just got to make sure you packed and you and you well you well versed. You understand what I'm saying? That's, that's priceless. That's just you just touched my heart right there, Marcus. Beyond everything else you do. All right, JD, you have another question, I think. So, Marcus, what has been your best experience being an autism activist? Um, it's really the kids, it's really the teenagers, it's really the adults that I get to meet state to state place to place. Um, two days ago, I just come back from Ontario, California, mm. speaking at a gala, um, you know, for Chasing Seven Dreams Foundation, her son has autism. So, you know, the sponsors was Mercedes Benz and, you know, um, United Way and all those big type sponsors was there and stuff of that nature. And at the end of the day, you know, it was the autism individuals that was there that touched me more than me just telling my story, more than me just giving advice, more than just anything else. Because what people don't understand and realize is almost five years ago, nobody didn't know what an autism activist was until I created it. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Nobody, no, they knew what an advocate was. Right. Because this is a person advocating for my child. It's a person advocating for a person I work with with autism. But to have a person with autism, not only just telling his story, but showing what can be done if you put God first. Mm -hmm. Because see, that's what we can't take out of this. We can't take God out of this because it's God because all of this is happening. Right. It's not me. I'm not no doctor. I'm not a miracle worker. I'm not, not none of those, those things. I'm just a person who told God, yes, I will use my voice in this field, in this community, in this area. And I, I'm 100% with you because people ask me, how do I do what I do? I said, it's not me. It's God. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't sit around and think, oh, what's the next thing I could do? It just comes to me. So that's God. So I, I understand completely what you're saying about that. I participate in Special Olympics in Connecticut. Please share about the trophies you received for Special Olympics. Um, I didn't. I didn't really receive no trophies. I received a bunch of ribbons, silver ones, red ones, blue ones, um, participation certificates. You have to understand, that was like in 91, 92, and 93. I just saw a big white bus. They told me to get on it and handed me a brown bag. I didn't know where I was going. You understand what wow. I'm saying? They told me to run outside. I'm a run. <laughs> I don't got to be in school. I mean, I was in special education. It was probably about five of us in the classroom anyway. My best friend was in a wheelchair and he was beating me running. So that gives you an idea of how fast I was going. Um, so uh, I didn't know until 92, we was in a group called Special Olympics Kids in Atlanta, Georgia. Didn't know it. I just knew I ain't had to go to school, that lunch was big and I was in the bus. <laughs> I actually coach. I, I I've coached for over eleven years, especially with a coach. Um, and Chase wow. has been participating, so he's he's been on track and field, basketball, softball. We did volleyball because I'm not a parent that just sits on the sidelines. I, I just 
I can't stay still, so I get involved. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's a great experience. And he's actually a global messenger as well. So keep them busy and involved. So, so <laughs> I don't like that. All right, Chase, you can have another story, another question. All right. What advice can you give to young adults to the, on the spectrum to navigating the world? Um, I would say, don't let your diagnosis be your in all. Look past that title, because that's just what it is. It's just a title. It's not your destination. It's not going to stop your greatness. It's only going to push it. That's your, like, like Jay said, that's your superpower. So you have to be able to use your superpower in the right way. You're going to get mm -hmm. mad. You're going to be depressed. You're going to be upset. You're not, you're going to feel sad. You're going to, you know, have days where you don't want to do it. But at the end of the day, you have to, as long as you got God, your family, a village of caring, supporting people, and, and family may not always be your blood. But it's about anybody that's going to love you, right. is going to push you, and is going to help you through this. Autism is not a death sentence. Right. It's, it's just mm. a different way of doing things. And once you see your superpower, then the world is your oyster. That's so true. Nice. So, Marcus, what is your plans for uh, 2022? Um, I plan to finally go to Burger King. Uh, <laughs> let me stop. <laughs> let me stop. <laughs> uh, now, nah, me and my team, we definitely working on the autobiography book that's on, that's on the way, the children's book, nice. um, the coloring book. Uh, we just put out the short film about my life with autism. Oh, great. Um, you know, next year we are doing autism music, um, autism music fest. It will be next April. Um, it'll, oh. be a three day, it'll be a three day festival. It will be the first of its kind for a music fest with special needs. We bring every special needs category together. And we're gonna all celebrate for three days. You understand what I'm saying? As a yeah. collective and as a family, autism music fest is coming next year. I um, like that. That's um, awesome. <laughs> So it's just a lot of different stuff that's coming. You know, the Boy With No Voice TV series and, you know, Autism, the American Family Story, the Ford Park docu-series that's coming next year. So, I mean, it's just a, it's just a, I'm like, I'm like Miss Taylor. I just can't say it. I, I can't. Um, <laughs> that's I, all I can't. a blessing. So, so this is going to be down in Atlanta, correct? No, the, um, we're going to do it in Ontario, California. The first one will be in Ontario, California. And then the next one, next year, it's a once a year thing. Right. So, you know, when you was, you know, in your area, you probably remember Woodstock. So it's not going to be like a Woodstock, right. but um, it's going to be a three-day festival. It's going to be a activities and stuff for adults, teenagers, kids, and babies. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Um, it's going to be performances, celebrities, special guests, food, vendors, and all this other stuff. Because, you know, when you go to stuff like this, normally, there's no activities for adults. You just have to sit there and watch your kids. But we want to change that narrative. Right. We want you to have fun too. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, I mean, of course, it won't be no liquor and alcohol. But if you can still have fun um, doing other yeah. stuff <laughs> um, with, with, with clean fun. Um, but, That's um, good too. That's good too. So, so we want to bring every disability together, not just okay. autism. Right. We want to bring all mm -hmm. of them together because in the special needs, we all family. That's I, I'm excited for that so inspiration to all of us. And please uh, continue to share your story, um, your voice about autism sectors and awareness. I just think, I, I just feel so good right now talking with you. I feel so inspired. I feel, I just feel really happy right now. Just, just having this conversation with you and what, as well as with Chase and um, Jay. So um, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So thank you, Mom and Jaden, for being my co-hosts. And thank you, autism activist Marcus Boyd, for being on the Social Change Show and for your advocacy. Thank you. The number one autism activist, Marcus Boyd. <laughs> thank you.